the members of IST 110, Section 2, Group 5, The Boulevard of Broken Streams, bring you data loggers for environmental monitoring, produced by Ty Bogarts, Bachelor of Science in Information Sciences and Technology. William Harmon, and a Security and Risk Analysis major. Kevin Hoover, Bachelor of IST. Angela House, and I'm a Security and Risk Analysis major. Brian Johnson, and my major is Accounting. Brittany Lewis, and my major is Information Sciences and Technology. Robert Rao, and my major is Information and Technology. So what is a data logger? According to the Oxford Dictionary of Ecology, data loggers are standalone electronic devices for data acquisition that records data at predetermined levels from one or more instruments, either integral to the device or external but attached to it. In simpler terms, it is a device that records many different types of data when and how it is instructed. Data loggers are capable of monitoring a wide range of data in a variety of applications. The technology is nearly at the point of, if you can dream it, you can log it. Data logging has been around for a very long time. It is a central part of many careers and fields of study. Data logging has come a long way in the past few decades, advancing the technology from a pen and paper to nearly a hands-free technology. The data logger had a humble beginning. However, advancements over the years have created a versatile little device used by many growing companies and industries. The building blocks of today's advanced data loggers were founded in Switzerland in 1974 by H.W. Keller, inventor of the first integrated silicon pressure measuring cell. Keller then went on to establish the level and pressure company Keller America. A few years later, in 1980, Solonist Canada LTD was founded by Doug Belshaw. Their first product was the Model 101 water level meter, which is still available today. Solonist was greatly expanded, now offering data loggers, telemetry, interface meters, drive points, samplers, and multi-level systems. One year later, in 1981, the first data logger was created in Massachusetts. Tattletail was the first commercial data logger which spawned the now famous Hobo brand data loggers. In 1989, the first in-well water level data logger was introduced by Chester McKee, founder of the company in Situ, another well-known data logger company in today's market. Since their first diver was introduced to the market in 1995, Van Essen Instruments has grown into a global leader in the water level monitoring industry. Today, Van Essen Instruments has reached over 200,000 diver deployments worldwide and more than 80 distributors in its international distribution network. The basic components of data loggers are analog to digital converter, microprocessor, memory, power supply, software, input channels, and sensors, and data outport. Data loggers can be used to measure many different things like temperature, speed and direction, moisture, and many more. There are several different types of data loggers, such as mechanical, standalone, wireless data nodes, web-based, RFID, and Bluetooth. Mechanical data loggers are freestanding and print directly from the logger as data is received. Standalone data loggers are easy to set up and deploy. They are portable and compact and relatively inexpensive. There are two models of standalone data loggers, internal sensor models and external sensor models. Internal sensor models monitor at the logger's location, whereas external sensor models can monitor a distance away from the data logger. The data that is gathered is then transferred to a computer using a USB interface. Wireless data nodes eliminate manual retrieval by transmitting data from dozens of points to a central computer. Web-based data loggers are connected through Wi-Fi, cellular, or Ethernet connections. This allows the user to obtain data from the logger at any time and from anywhere that they can access the Internet. Some data loggers use Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID, to transmit data to the user in real time. The final type of data logger is a Bluetooth low energy data logger, which can connect with a mobile device within an approximate distance from the logger. There is a wide range of data loggers on the market. They can cost anywhere in between $300 to $3,500. Their battery lives vary from 30 days to 10 years. Some loggers gather data every one eighth of a second, while others may log data every 99 hours. Let's take a look at some of the typical applications of data loggers in the field of environmental monitoring. One of the oldest and still most widely used applications of data loggers is in earthquake monitoring. Through the use of modern seismographs, we can take data from all over the world to help us predict earthquakes. 
Recording pollution levels in both the soil and the water is also a major application of data loggers and is used globally to help monitor the effects of pollution, pinpoint its source, and hopefully reduce its effects. This also extends into groundwater quality quantification for wells and is both for the monitoring of the quality of existing wells and for the planning of new ones. When performing ecology studies on both flora and fauna, it is crucial to keep log of any and all environmental factors that could impact the species under study. While weather stations themselves can be considered data loggers, smaller loggers may also be used when planning the placement of a weather station to avoid microclimates that would affect the accuracy of its readings. Light pollution has a heavy impact on terrestrial telescopes, so when planning the placement of a new observatory or just a hobbyist looking for a good spot, data loggers can be used to measure the intensity of local light pollution. Droughts can have a serious impact on local and global resources, so the best way to prepare for a drought is to predict it using both data loggers and remote sensing technologies. Insulation, or incoming solar radiation, is the amount of energy that is reaching the ground from the sun. Monitoring this is crucial when finding the location to build a solar power plant and can have a large impact on the amount of power generated. Data loggers are widely used in environmental restoration studies. One such project is the Morris Run Watershed, a tributary to the Upper Tiger River in Pennsylvania. Coal mining began in this area in the mid-1800s in deep mines and then on the surface. This has since resulted in widespread development of acid mine drainage, or AMD. In Morris Run, most of the AMD now comes from three abandoned deep mine discharges. Under a recent grant, the Tioga County Concerned Citizens Committee is developing a treatment plan for these discharges. The first goal of this treatment is to reduce the amount of AMD reaching the Tioga River, and the second goal is to eventually restore aquatic life in Morris Run. The Morris Run project uses 18 sample points to monitor water quality, and day loggers are used in five ways to collect data at one-hour intervals between monthly sample rounds. For each of the mine discharges, a pressure-transducing data logger and H-flow measure flow. Downstream from the discharges, another logger is used with a staged discharge curve to measure total watershed flow in Morris Run. To measure leakage from the stream into the mines, loggers and flumes are also installed upstream and downstream of the leaking reach. Because the loggers used for flow measurement are the non-vented type, another logger is stationed in free air to collect barometric pressure correction readings. And a final data logger installation uses a tipping bucket rain gauge to collect precipitation data for the watershed. The following footage shows the installation of the leakage monitoring stations on Morris Run and of the monitoring sample run conducted shortly thereafter. I'm here with uh, Jeff Ream of J. Ream Engineering this morning. We're going to install a flow monitoring station downstream of the Morris Run Dam in the upper part of the Morris Run res Reservoir. Uh, the purpose of this is to measure stream water coming from areas that we think are not affected by deep mines underlying this watershed. Uh, later on this afternoon, we're going to install another dam downstream where we think is below the area that's been influenced, and we're going to try and measure between these to see what the flow loss is. The point of installing the dam is to get a level section across the area. Now we have the basic layout of the dam. We're going to put the flume on and make some cuts in the boards so we can take them down the hill and install them. Here's our completed installation. In the absence of a logger, we're still going to take a water sample and see what the quality is, and we can still make a measurement with the flume as far as the flow. Uh, after this, we're going to be doing a lot of sampling, and this is where we're actually going to get the data loggers put to use and um, start seeing some results from them. The uh, first deep mine discharge in our system that we're trying to fix, and uh, Jeff is downloading the data logger from that. This is a one-foot uh, H flume that we put in as a temporary installation using just sandbags because we're planning to take it out again uh, when the project's done. Also at uh, OOLON, Jeff is downloading the uh, bear logger. The hobo units that we're using in this installation are unvented data loggers, so they're reading both the air pressure and the water pressure, so we need to get a record of the air pressure so we can subtract that off and get a true reading for our water depth. The second major discharge in the watershed, uh, sample point 003. This discharge is DMR 004, which is the main entryway for the coal mines that are draining the Morris Run watershed. Uh, very large discharge. We did a temporary installation of a foot and a half flume here uh, with a data logger. Now here's the situation 
where we can't conveniently put a flow measurement device into the stream because of the high flows. So in this case, we put a data logger into a stilling well at the edge of the stream. This is the end game in the acid mine drainage treatment. Large scale systems like this where we're using limestone to treat the water. Self-contained data loggers like those used at Morris Run store information internally and must be periodically downloaded. This can be done by either direct or remote connections depending on the logger type. Direct connections may require that the logger be removed from its installation. Download files are first processed through vendor software to convert the data to a form readable by other applications. Readings usually consist of a record number, date and time stamp, and the measured values of the sensors built into the logger. The output is typically a comma separated value or CSV file that can be read by analysis software. For the Morris Run project, data from the mine discharges is first corrected with the barometric logger data and then converted into flow using a flume formula. The rain gauge data are also processed to provide daily precipitation amounts. By combining the two data sets in one chart, it is apparent that flow from the deep mine discharges increases within a few days of a large rainfall event, indicating that water is rapidly infiltrating from the surface into the mines. Data loggers are used in a variety of ways. One of the growing methods that has been directing the development of data loggers is the implementation of remote sensing. What is remote sensing? As stated by Mitt Vicar, it is as follows. Remote sensing is the acquisition of digital data from either satellite, aircraft, or ground-based systems, but characteristically at a distance or remote from the target. In short, for my purposes, remote sensing is used to collect data in real time from a remote location away from the data logger without having to physically interact with it to collect the stored data. This has become a valuable method of collecting data as it allows you to collect more data points of information for more accurate results without having to tamper with existing setups. What are the current uses of remote sensing? One such use is in North America in the Great Lakes region. Multiple types of data loggers are used to collect conditions of the lake to determine the effects of algal bloom on the lake, collecting data to create five-day weather forecasts of its direction and intensity to protect people from these zones. What does the future hold for data logger technology? As you can imagine, the uses of data loggers are almost limitless. Data collection, in its many forms, will always play a major role in our ever-advancing technological society. Recently, data loggers have shown their presence in some interesting and surprising places. One of the more unique applications of data logging involved a team of veterinary researchers who attached a data logger to a modified cow halter. The logger measured the pressure exerted by the cow's jaw, the number of chews, and the number of cuds the cow produced per day. Their goal was to measure the number of chews it took dairy cattle to process a single cud and the number of cuds a cow produced during a unit of time. For the curious, a cow produces 347 to 478 cuds per day and spends a mean of six and a half hours chewing cud per day. This is one example of how data logger usage is only limited by imagination. On a more serious side, data loggers are seeing an ever-growing use in climatology. NASA's Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment satellites use a variety of data loggers to track ocean currents, groundwater storage, ice melt, and profiling the Earth's atmosphere. Using this technology, NASA has found that it will take over 11 trillion gallons of water to replace the losses suffered during the California droughts. NASA also discovered a dwindling snowpack which will only further exacerbate the drought conditions. A team of scientists used the same data logging technology provided by the GRACE satellite system to predict cholera outbreaks. The team was able to develop a cholera forecasting system by studying the patterns of terrestrial water storage. They found that they could predict cholera outbreaks when terrestrial water storage levels dropped in river basins, thus inducing less river discharge, which caused an influx in seasonal bacterial intrusion. From cow cud to disease prediction in space, the limits of data loggers are only limited by imagination. Data loggers will continue to lead to the forefront of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, ultimately advancing human technologies for the greater good. Hey, the headwaters of Morris Run have come back an incredible amount since the uh, 70s and the 80s with the acid rain. We're actually seeing these guys again, the crayfish. And they're a very healthy indicator of stream, stream health in general. If they're living here, we're doing the right thing. What we want to do is to keep this going and try and progress this downstream. 
So hopefully this guy will go on and make some more. And we can take care of the rest of the stream all the way down to the Tiger River.